we're going to learn how to properly pull a mane, um, especially in preparation for um, a braider, because braiders like to have really nice manes. That's the way your braids turn out uh, the best that they can be. A poorly pulled mane um, doesn't help your braid job, so braiders can only fake so much. What you're going to need is a big comb. Um, I don't like the little mane combs for mane pulling. Um, it could be a comb like this or a big rectangular one. Um, a pair of very, very sharp scissors. Um, I like to keep mine uh, around my neck because I hate dropping them. I like them always handy. And um, a step stool. Um, just be careful uh, when you use a step stool when you pull in the mane. A lot of horses don't like it. And if they move around a lot, you really got to be quick to move it out of their way so they don't get hurt. Um, this horse here has a pretty nice mane. Um, it's definitely on the long side. Um, so we're going to shorten it up and I'll show you how to do that. Um, some horses are a lot easier than others. Um, horses that have very thick manes um, are a little bit harder to do because you really have to pull a lot in those thick areas because the idea is you want to have the mane as even as possible in the thickness all the way down so when you run your hand up you can feel it to see how thick it is in places. You can find the thick places and you want to have it um, the same length. Now braiders will tend to like to have it you know three inches you know, three to four inches um, at most, uh, depending on the horse's mane. Um, uh, so you can go a little bit short, especially with the ponies. But um, now, the other thing I know, some people use a uh, a razor blade type comb that has you know to thin it, a thinning comb. Um, I don't use those. I don't like them because they break the mane. Um, I get they're useful, especially for horses that don't like their manes pulled. Um, but when you braid it, you're going to have lots of broken hairs oftentimes, unless you cut down at the base of the hair. Um, so they are useful. I just don't use them. Um, there are some horses that are so sensitive about their manes that you do need to tranquilize them to get the job done because um, it's just not worth the battle. It just truly hurts them. Uh, what else? Um, one thing also to keep in mind is when you're pulling manes, you know, it's, it can be a little bit painful for some of them. Don't just concentrate in one area. I like to move up and down my mane as I go, and I give breaks between cutting a little bit and pulling to kind of break it up. Um, all right, so with that, um, first thing you want to do is make sure that your horse's mane is clean, but um, you don't want it wet because if it's wet and you try to pull it, the hairs are just going to stretch and break. Um, and also, you do not want to put show sheen on a horse's mane before you pull it because you won't be able to hold on to the hairs. It makes it way too slippery. Um, so, you know, I'm going along this hairs, this horse's mane is easily, you know, two to three, two to three inches too long. So I'm going to go along, I'm going to pull in places, but where it starts getting thin, especially down at the bottom, I'm going to use scissors more down here than up here because I don't want to pull it to where there's nothing left. Um, because, like I said, you want a uniform main, uniform thickness all the way down. And I'll show you how to incorporate the scissors as we go. So, just starting out, but what I normally do is I take my comb, I'm going to find a long piece of hair, and I'm going to push up with my comb until it's a thin piece of hair, all right? And then I'm going to put my third finger, I have three fingers, just like when you hold your reins, three fingers, and I just pull straight out. So it's very easy. I don't wrap it around my comb. The only time I do the old method of, you know, scraping it up. Whoopsie, that one just came right out. Scraping it up. See, it's going to get a little fussy. And wrapping it around is if, you know, some horses, it's real, they have really tough hair to pull out. So sometimes I need a little help because I might be getting blisters or I just can't get it. I might, might not be strong enough. Yes, yeah, so you can see he's not very happy about what I'm doing. So if I just so he's kind of woken up, he was kind of sleeping there for a minute. So we'll see if he's going to stand here for me. So I just push up and I pull. So pull him back in the screen here. There we go. And I tend to just move with my horse, but since I need to stay on camera, I'm, I'm trying to move him to where I need it. Okay. So I push up and I pull, and I try to go pretty quickly um, so that uh, you know they don't have time to think about it, because if you sit there taking too long, they're going to get all worried waiting for the event to happen, okay? All right, so I just push up and I pull, okay, just like that, all right? Now, if I think he's getting too fussy and I want him to stand still better, then I take my comb, and just to change it up, I comb it down, and it's always on the right side of the mane, and I angle my scissors up, and I just start cutting it up a little bit, 
to the length where I want it. And I do that, especially in the thin parts, because um, I'll do that first, and then I'll pull some to help get rid of that freshly cut look, because you don't want it to look like a bowl cut with your scissors. Yeah, so I just cut into the mane to make it look more natural, so I don't go straight across. Um, now, if you're doing a horse that hasn't ever had his mane done, and it's really, really long, well, sometimes it's impossible to start pulling. So, for like, say you got something that comes in for the pasture, his mane's down to here. Well, I might come along with my scissors and chop off a whole length first before I even attempt to do anything else because that'll also make it easier for you to comb out all the tangles that are sure to be in that mane. Now, here he's got some thin mane because his, his uh, blanket lays over this part. So, you know, he's lost some hair here. And I just start cutting it up where it needs to be. Okay. And don't worry if you make a mistake, you can always go back and fix it and try to make it look natural. Okay. So I just go along here. And I usually, my method is usually to start from the bottom and go up when I'm cutting because it helps me keep it one length as I go up. Um, so if I start here, like I might, I'm going to go across a little bit here. I don't know if you can still see this or not. But I'm um, going to make my way up the main. This part's really thin down here, and that's hard to see. Um, so I'm just going to start cutting across to get it somewhere with the length that I want. Okay, you can see this is pretty long here. Okay, so I just start cleaning it up. Don't forget the stuff on the bottom. Okay, and as I go up, I find thick spots, and I don't want it too choppy. If you just cut your mane, that makes it very hard to braid because when you braid it down um, and you have to tie it off, if all the hair is the exact same length, that makes it very hard to hold on to and to get a good tie in because it makes the knot want to come out. Um, give me a three. Yeah, so he's going to be a little fussy. Uh, so I'm just going to go along. Uh -huh. Try to get him back in the camera here. One step. There you go. There we go. I pull. And if you take too thick of a hold, the hair's not going to come out and they're not going to be happy because that's just too much. But up here, they just tend to have thicker manes at the top than at the bottom, which of course is the last place you want it because up by their heads, they're more sensitive. They don't like you yanking on them up here. Okay? Now, sometimes if they're really moving around, um, you might need to stand on the ground and just reach up to do it. Um, I'm just going to go as quick as I can on him. And then I'm going to show you one. I'm going to show you a horse that doesn't like it at all and show you how you can handle that uh, without your traditional switches. Okay? So, so I get it going. Okay? And then... I go back to my scissors, give them a little break, start getting the whiskeys cut off, okay, as I go up the top. There we go. I'm just going to start kind of attacking this top part here, and then I'll come back and pull on it. Just because it's being fussy, it'll make my job a little easier if I kind of attack it this way. Okay, now... I can go in here, and there's definitely thick, choppy parts. So I go in, and I usually kind of reach from down at the bottom underneath, and I try to grab the longest pieces. Um, the bottom pieces, I don't know, for some reason, they just seem to come out easier than the ones on top. Um, maybe they hurt less, too. Um, so I kind of grab from underneath and pull. I know. And sometimes I'll just kind of scratch them with my comb, and that kind of relaxes them. Because they don't see it coming. But your horse will become very used to the fact that when you do this, it's coming. Okay? So that's why you want to change it up so you don't completely freak them out. See this? Oh, that's like a little scratchy job. And they'll pull out of your fingers a little bit. Now, if your fingers get really soft skin, you're going to blister. Um, but what you can do to protect yourself and still be able to pull the mane is to get some of that waterproof white um, medical tape um, and you can tape your fingers come on, one step uh, tape your fingers where you do the pull and that'll protect it protect it. 
I know, you're just being a fuss nugget. So then I'll go back to my scissors because he's being fussy. I know. And I'll just start going up vertical because I don't want it to be all choppy. And I just come across. Now this is a, this horse is a jumper. His mane actually doesn't ever get braided, but I still do a nice job. At, on on jumpers, I might leave their manes a little bit longer so they lay over nicely when you're in the arena, because um, it gives them a little more weight in their mane. Because um, when you have the really short manes, a lot of times they'll kind of stick up a little bit, um, especially if it's like a thick pony mane, it'll kind of stick straight up. Uh, okay. So this is the general idea of how you go and pull your mane. You can see he's calmed down immediately when I go back to my scissors and stop pulling on him. Okay, so, and if your horse needs a break, give him a break. You know, there's no need to get mad at him. You wouldn't like it either if someone was going across yanking your hair out. It's a sensitive thing. Okay, and so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is gonna go get the other pony here in a minute. Um, but as I go, you can see I roll down my, my comb, and that's going to tell me if I'm even and if it looks natural or if there's choppy bits. And I can use, with my scissors, I can try to, you know, clip up, clean it up, but then I can also try to make it look a little more natural by cutting in vertically. And then whenever there's a choppy thick spot, I go in and I start pulling again to make it look more natural. And that's going to change the lengths that are in there and thin it out, okay? I know, my goodness. My goodness, I know. Just, he knows it's coming, doesn't he? And I just don't worry about it. I don't hit him. I don't fuss. Now, you can do the same thing on the forelocks. You can pull their forelocks. Most horses' forelocks aren't really thick enough to pull, all right? Usually I leave them alone because I like a full forelock. But if there's like little wispies, I might just clean the end. But he doesn't have much of a forelock, so I'm going to leave it alone. And I'll come back and finish him in a second. But I want to um, take a break. I want to show you how to handle um, a horse that maybe isn't so great. Okay. Now, another thing to mention is if your horse doesn't like to have his mane pulled, um, don't put him in the cross ties if he doesn't stand well enough. Because you don't want one pulling back and, you know, ripping out the cross ties and getting hurt and causing problems. Put him in a stall. <laughs> tie him up if they're safe to tie up. If they're going to pull back, then you want to just keep it loose. And maybe have someone help hold because they can. You can put the uh, the lead rope through a ring or around the poles. Who can help hold it, but not for you know make him so he can't get away. Um, but to help control the animal, because um, cross ties can be very dangerous if you're not careful. Okay, so now this pony. Oh, my, this pony does not like to have his mane pulled, and he gets and he's not. Horrible, horrible, but he, what he does is he doesn't like, um, he wants to pull me off or push me off the step stool all the time. So I normally can't use a step stool with him unless I'm just cutting, all right? And instead of the traditional uh, twitches, you know, that squeeze their nose here, whether it's a chain or a, a regular twitch, um, I don't like those because all it does is it's so unnatural to have their lips like that. It makes them very upset, and they normally don't stand all that great. I mean, some do. But some don't. Now, this is what I call a natural twine twitch. And what I've done is just taken a piece of twine and I made a, um, a slip knot. So it's like a lasso. See, I can pull, make it big and I can pull it tight. All right, so what we're going to do is we have a method of doing this so that um, we're going to release some endorphins into their blood system, which is going to naturally calm them. So I put it behind his ears. I make the loop big enough. And then I'm going to put it inside his upper lip, okay? So you can see it, it's up between his gums and his lip, all right? Now, I haven't pulled tight or anything, and I've set it up so that it's not going to get in his eye, all right? Now, this one, oops, i make sure I'm pulling on the right part. Okay, now I, I, I have it set tension a little bit. Let me, uh, that thing's kind of in the way. Let me cut off some of this extra, so then poke him in the eye. Okay. So when I pull, it's going to squeeze on his gums, and it's going to release endorphins to help naturally calm him. All right, and I don't, sometimes I give him a good little yank, but I'm not going to pull so hard and cause him to bleed or anything, okay? It's, called, it's, a, it's a more natural, um, kinder twitch. 
Okay, now this pony's mane is very thick, likes to lay on the wrong side. Um, it's just, there's a lot of it. It's not a fun one to pull. And especially since he doesn't like it, that makes it even worse. So, I have my steps at the moment because I'm just trying to, I haven't combed it out yet. Okay, so, I'm just going to give you the idea how, I'm not going to do his whole mane, but I'm just going to show you what I do. I'm going to hold my twitch in my right hand, so you got to make sure the string's long enough. Let's put you Okay, he's naturally going to step back. Okay, so I'm ready to pull at any time. Okay, now I don't want to freak him out too much, so I'm going to take thin pieces. I take one long piece of hair. I'm going to go up one time, see how thin that is, and pull. And I didn't get a whole lot that time, but that's okay. Not every pull is a good pull. Okay? And I'm not pulling on my twitch yet, but I'm ready to, just in case he starts going after me, like trying to step on my feet and push me over and move too much. So that was a good one. So you can see, he didn't like it. But if I'm calm, um, he'll stay calm. I'm not going to make a big to-do out of it. It's okay. And they really don't like it at either ears, you know. And I missed that one, which is a bummer. Yeah, so that's okay. I'm just going to go back, and I'm going to pull some more out. And he knows I have the twitch on. He's used to this, so it definitely gets his attention because he knows it'll pull. Okay? Um, so, you know, I did one up there, and I'll come down here. It's actually kind of thin down there. I think I'll come up here, and I'll pull and go. And you can see he doesn't like it at all. But I'm not yanking on him the whole time. But the minute he starts to really get fussy, then that's when I'm going to pull on it. But maybe he's <laughs> maybe he's done this often enough. He's not going to start walking around like he normally does. He's actually being pretty good for him. Um, but I don't worry that he's turning his head. You know, they're animals. Don't expect them to just stand perfectly while you sit there and yank hair out of their neck. They're not going to. So getting angry and hitting them and yelling at them and throwing a fit doesn't serve anyone. All it does is get them very upset. Um, and then they're really not going to want you to pull their mane the next time. Um, and like I said, some horses, this truly, truly hurts, where there's a sound that you have no choice but to either cut or to tranquilize. Because um, there's just no, no other way to go about it, because it really freaks them out. And even a twitch isn't going to help them out. Oh, this one hasn't been combed out. Okay. I go up. See, I had to pull twice that time. And I go up. Twice. Okay. And I just go along and pull. Okay. But he's being pretty good. I really haven't had to pull on the twitch at all. I just had it sitting in there. If your horse has never had the twitch, you'll probably find you're going to have to give it a few tugs, you know, so they learn what it means. And again, don't do this if you think there's a possibility that your horse could pull back on the cross ties. Um, you could do it inside the stall where there's more safety, this pony's not going to pull back um, because I've done this many times on him. So um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and finish him, and I'll show you the finished product. Um, and then if I think of anything else to say, I'll let you know. And then when, remember, if he's being good, if you have it pulled tight, loosen it a little bit. Give him a break, but keep it still there because see, it's, it, there's no tension on it right now, but make sure it doesn't slip into his mouth either. Because the next time you yank, it'll just go up into his lip, uh, mouth right here, which you wouldn't like. Okay? So there's no tension, but the minute I need it, I just pull, and it goes tight, and he'll be good. And then when you're done, you simply take it off, save it for next time, or just make a new one. They're excellent. Excellent for uh, when you're, if they're bad for the farrier, if they're bad for the clippers. It's the best twitch I've ever used in my life, and I've tried it all. Okay. So this pony is basically done now. And he was actually really good. And the one thing to remember is at the end, make sure you go all the way up your mane. You know, getting the loose pieces, you know, anything you might have missed. Check that the um, legs are the same all the way up the neck. So I take my comb, I start from the bottom. I work my way up. You can see as I come down, I can see where there might be wispies. Just like a hairdresser. If you find any places where it's extra thick that you still need to work on, then go ahead and grab a piece 
little piece and pull it out. Other than that, this pony's got a nice mane. Now to braid, it's about the length of my comb, which is about, you know, it's between three and four inches. So it should be a nice mane to braid when we get to the horse shows. Um, not too long for the braider, not too thick for the braider, um, not too short either. Uh, so, um, yeah, so we'll show you how to braid in, uh, in another video. Thank you.